Palace Cafe. That's kind of key to this dessert, right? Because you really can't have it anywhere. You go to Paris, New York, and Chicago, and San Francisco, and more than likely you're going to find a restaurant that is offering some form of banana sponsor, but it was indeed invented at this very restaurant. So I like to say now that you're experiencing it here, you are joining a very exclusive club because not everybody in the world can come to Brennan's and have the banana sponsor where it was invented. So as a member of that club, you now have have bragging rights for the remainder of your life. So the next time you offered it anywhere else in the world, now not only do you have the right, but you have the obligation to say, no thank you. I've had it at Brennan's. And if they don't think about the restaurant business, they'll know exactly what they want. So let's hand it with all the butter, brown sugar, and cinnamon. And I did add some banana liqueur to the saute pan just to loosen up that brown sugar to give the dessert a more intense banana flavor. So the year was 1951. And the dessert is actually based on a breakfast dish. And the way it came about is back in 51, Owen Brennan, who is our original owner, was best friends with a gentleman named Richard Foster. And Mr. Foster was promoted to the crime commissioner of the Bucare, and he was coming in one evening to celebrate. Owen, being the friend that he was, really wanted to honor him by putting his special dessert on the menu, so he commissioned his younger sister, Ella, Ella Brennan, to come up with a new dessert. However, he only gave her two hours before the supper was to begin to come up with that dessert. And as you would know, she was extremely busy that afternoon. She didn't have time to sit down with Chef to discuss the new dessert, much less anything else. So she was in a panic. She didn't know what she was going to do until she noticed a plethora of bananas in the kitchen that sparked a memory of a breakfast her mom made for the Miss Kids by sauteing the bananas in brown sugar and serving alongside very soft, creamy scrambled eggs. Ms. Ella said, you know what, I really enjoy that breakfast. I bet it would make a great dessert. If I simply add a little rum to it, a little banana liqueur, I'll serve it over vanilla bean ice cream instead of eggs, and I'll call it dessert. Well, thankfully for all of us, as usual, she got her way later that evening. That breakfast appeared on the menu as dessert. Little did she or anyone else know it would become a world thing. Now we flambe over 45,000 pounds of bananas a year. That's how popular it is. All right, so we're going to make magic out of the flambe a little dark time. You want to film this in slow motion. So you want to switch your film from your video over to slow mo. Am I ready? A little dark around the hand. You still got your eyebrows? <laughs> I will let you know, and this for y'all too, that people when people say that, they're like, have, have, have your eyebrows ever been cinched? And I'm like, you know, I don't notice it at the time, but there are just many times I'll go home and look in the mirror and the eyebrows are cinched. But that's, that's God saying it's time to trim your brows. So he's, he's doing it for me, right? All right, so um, we're going to get the bananas out for you. Um, all right, best part is coming up. Besides eating it, obviously, and that's going to be that sauce. Because without the sauce, it's just bananas and ice cream. Yeah, he's like, I'm Really, it's amazing how something so simple can be so darn good. All of this started from the But how you run with butter and brown sugar and a little rum, right? All right, may I present the There you go. Thanks, sir. Yeah, y'all enjoy it. Want me to plug? Whenever you're flying, I mean, like, even... Uh, I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, 